Visit SayRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, Eric Grant from SayRight. In this video series, we're going to show you how to redo an entire power boat. The upholstery, the flooring, the side panels, and more, including this motor cover, and make a used power boat look brand new. It's true, you can buy a used power boat and save thousands compared to buying a new one, and you can make the entire thing look brand new, just like we did in these videos. This tutorial video will cover redoing this old helm chair, and this is what it'll look like after we're done. So let's get started and reupholster this helm chair. The first step is removing the old fabric and evaluating the foam. Eric Grant here. In this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster this helm chair, and it is in bad shape. So we've already done the seat, and the process to do this is done exactly like the video up showing up here in the right-hand corner, except for this one's obviously a lot easier than the one showing there. So that's covered in a separate video. This video, we're going to tear apart this seat and show you how to redo it. So we have to take the old vinyl off, and, and usually these seats have fasteners. This one had two screws down here, and then usually the back lifts up like that, like that. So they had holes in here, and they use something like a uh, nuts and washers. I don't like the way this stands proud. We're probably going to chop that off because that's just sticking into the foam. Now, one of the things you may want to do is take a few pictures of what the chair used to look like because once you get it taken apart, you're going to find that you may not remember exactly how it was put together. So take a few pictures in advance. We're using a staple uh, lifter to remove the old staple and the vinyl. And uh, sometimes the vinyl has such a memory that it's hard to use as a pattern. So I'm going to remove all the old vinyl and probably not use it as a pattern, but use Duraskrim on the frame of the chair to get the new pattern. The vinyl's now loose. There's still a lot of staples that need to be pulled out, but I think we're about ready to do so. So we're going to pull the old vinyl off, and then we'll inspect the foam and uh, clean up the rest of the staples and show you what it's like. But here you can see the frame starting to appear. Sometimes you can use your staple lifter and actually do this at the corners so you don't get poked and the vinyl just comes around the corners that way. Uh, it's just a thing that I've learned over the time to keep from getting poked from all these staples. Oh, this one's got a fabric pole in it. This is a separate piece of foam. Uh, it's probably higher or lower than the opposite foam. And then this is a fabric pole in between the two layers of foam. So we need to obviously remove the staples that hold the fabric pole. I'm going to lift up this side so you can see that there is a second piece of foam in it. Looks like there's a whole bunch of insects that lived in here too. Blech! Oh, and a little bump here out too for your back. And some sort of, I don't know what that is. Anyway, okay, after the cover is removed, we need to assess the foam. Now, I don't like using foam with, uh, that has black mold all over it, and it's also compressed a lot. You can tell here at the corners, uh, this rolled is not something that was put in by the factory. This happens just over time because the vinyl pulls it down. So we're going to, if I feel this, or remove it even, we can see that this is about one inch at the thickest parts. So I'm going to put a one inch cushion right foam here and here. And then if you look at the outside surface, this is rather thin. Um, it looks like it's a half inch. So we're going to put uh, sew foam on the sides and around the back and wrap it around the bottom a little bit. We're going to replace this foam. I do not want to redo an entire upholstery job and have foam that can cause problems or all be collapsed already. It'll make your upholstery look much better. So replace it with cushion right foam from Sailorite. Okay, so we're going to remove the foam and again we're going to replace it. And I'm going to try to keep it in one piece. I don't think I'm going to use it as a pattern. I'm probably going to pattern the whole chair and then use that. So as you can see it's been glued on. That's why it's kind of sticking a little bit. We're just going to take it all off 
and try to keep it intact so we know exactly what to do again. Now I know that this is not going to be used again, but we don't want to throw it away until we're done with the project, so we're going to save that. Now inspect your frame. Oh, thankfully this is like a starboard and not a uh, marine plywood. If it were a marine plywood, it'd probably be totally corrupt. But we can see some broken screws. So we're going to take out the broken screws and replace them with new screws. We're going to make a pattern for cutting the foam for the inner arms now. I'm using Super 88 adhesive and I need to cut foam to match this. Easiest way, believe it or not, is to use Durascrim and that way you have an exact shape of what you need for the foam. So this is a piece of Durascrim cut oversized and I sprayed this surface and my primary job is to get it to lay flat and that spray foam makes that possible all the way to the edges. I trimmed some of it away and what I'm going to do is just mark at the uh, transition here so I know how to cut my foam. And then we'll mark this outer edge. Now I'm not sure if this side's going to actually work. For this side we're going to try it, but uh, let's just assume right now it doesn't. So I mark out and then here we're going to cut the foam to zero inches, in other words right on the line. Let's just write foam. And the same thing here, zero inches. This is one inch cushion right, uh, medium density, uh, medium firmness. And this is our pattern that we made for the sides. I'm going to use a Super 88. And put this on. It doesn't matter if it's outside or uh, inside. Um, surface because you could just flip the foam. Doesn't there's no right side to the foam. So we're not adding any ex extra for the foam. So we just cut right on the lines. And I usually just do it like this. You can use scissors for one inch foam too, but this works really well. Now that we have the inner foam cut to size, let's apply the sew foam to the helm seat. This is a tough material called shelterite. It's a vinyl product. We're going to fill that hole with it. So I'm just cutting it to the general size, oversize. And I'm going to staple it to the back side of this application uh, and then we'll trim it to size because I don't want to have a hole here. It doesn't matter which side you put up. So I'm going to put three staples at the top. And then I'm going to come down here. I can feel the hole here. I'm going to pull taut because I definitely want it tight. Three staples, then go to the middle section. The reason for the hole was for a pocket. We've decided not to have a pocket in our helm seat. That's why we're covering the hole. So we have staples all around the perimeter and it's actually going to make a pretty good base. So this is half inch sew foam and I'm positioning the chair in a spot where I can wrap it around. So I'm going to make sure that I have plenty. Yes, I'm going to have plenty to wrap around. And I have the foam side up. This side is a fabric backing and it's main, mainly used so that stitches, if you sew through it, don't go through the foam. Uh, I like to have the fabric backing up in applications like this, but it doesn't really matter. So when I roll this up, how much foam do I need? I'm just going to mark outside by several inches around the perimeter and then I can cut it to size and I don't have to work with all this. So in an effort to uh, glue it down more accurately, I'm just cutting it to down to size, oversize. Okay, you can use a 3M Geno trim adhesive, headliner adhesive, 3M super trim or even the uh, high tax 76 for this. We're going to use the uh, 3M General trim for this. And what we want to do is we want to spray both surfaces. So I'm spraying the outside of the chair. And then we also want to spray the foam as well. This stuff has a nice web pattern. That's why I like using it.
Okay, we want to make sure that it's tacky before you adhere it, and I usually use my knuckle, and if glue does not transfer to my finger, it's ready for bonding. So we're going to stick this side on and just kind of press it so that it goes on nice like that. Super easy. Okay, we're not going to trim yet. Then we're going to roll the chair around and we'll work on the back side next. On the foam and the chair, including that shelter right that we put on. Okay, this is a tip for anybody that cares about my opinion. Seth and I, the cameraman, were discussing which glue actually works better. This doesn't spray out as nice. This uh, 3M really sprays out well. Both work, but this is a better pattern, and I do believe you get more usage out of this because of the fact that this doesn't spread out as much. So my choice, 3M Geno Trim. So we're tacky again on both surfaces. We're gonna roll it to the back side and make sure that it's stuck down well. And then we're gonna do this side in the same manner. Like that. So no trimming to size yet until we get the foam on the inside. Okay, we're gonna have a board here, but this is a void, and that void is about a half inch, so I cut some sew foam to match that, and then I'm gonna uh, staple another thing of shelterite on this, which will all basically mean when the board's there, we won't be able to feel it. I'm gonna put a little bit of spray glue on this so this, the foam doesn't move around, and put it on the, let's see, I'll put it on this side. And we're going to staple that on just like we did when we stapled it on this side. Next, we're going to apply that inner foam and then we're going to trim the sew foam to size. Okay, you can see the edges aren't terribly smooth, but they don't really need to be. So it's going to fit in here nicely. Now we have this ridge. I'm going to mark it here and then I'm going to come up that same distance and cut it, which is right about there. And I'll do that on the other side as well. We're going to just use scissors for this just to let it rest in that spot. So there we go. She sits in there nicely now. So we're going to glue this uh, with our general trim adhesive, which means we're going to spray both surfaces again and let it tack up. Okay, you do have some working time here. It's tacked up. We tested it. And if you get it in the wrong spot, don't panic because it really is not permanently bond for at least a few minutes. You may have to kind of rip it up a little bit like this, but just want to work at getting it sunk into the position and in the right spot. And she's on there for good. We're going to do the same thing to the opposite side. What we're going to do next is we're going to spray this edge and the sew foam so that we can fold it over the edge. And we're going to do that on both sides. I put some spray glue here and we're going to wrap this around because this was actually wrapped to the back side here. <coughs> okay. And then we're going to take these and wrap them around. If you have a spot where there's a bump, we'll have to cut it out. Um, and we will do that. So we're just going to wrap this and I'm not going to wrap it around to the front side. I'm just wrapping it to the top. The best way to cut this off is with an electric kitchen knife and just come across your foam. Now at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it so that it leaves a little bit so that it can wrap around. I'm going about a half inch outside the bottom, and then I'm going to use spray glue and make sure that it wraps around like this. Probably don't need to use the glue. The vinyl will probably kick it over, but I'm just going to secure it just to be sure. Creating a pattern is next. It's necessary because we have brand new foam, so we don't want to use the old vinyl. Okay, we've laid our uh, chair that's already got the foam on it, so we're ready for patterning. And uh, we want to make sure that we have enough pattern material that we can wrap around on both sides. So I've cut it to a general size, way oversize. We had been using Super 88. For this application, we're going to use 3M Super 77. Uh, it's an alternative.
Now we're to the back side. And just roll it over. You only need to spray it on one surface. I'm going to try to keep it fairly flat. You may have to reposition. And then we're on this side. Okay, once we've got it on, we're going to trim it to size uh, closer to the edges, but not, not right on the edge. In other words, I'm leaving a one to two inches around the perimeter. Now that we have it trimmed to size, we want to check to make sure that we're happy with the way everything is uh, resting on here. We want to try to remove as many wrinkles as possible. Small little dinky wrinkles, I'm not going to worry about too much. Now that actually looks pretty good, so inspect it carefully. Okay, so this is our pattern that goes all the way around, and we're going to have another pattern that goes inside and is stapled here, and then comes across here, and then is uh, stapled here. We, so we're going to have a seam that joins this all around this top edge. Does this pattern lay down? all the way to this edge, because we have to determine where the seam is going to go. Is it going to go here, the seam right here on this edge, or does it have to go someplace else? So your pattern will tell you this. So can you lay this in here without a pleat? No, you got to have a pleat there. Here, can this lay down flat without a relief? No. It would have to, see, you'd notice it doesn't lay down flat. You'd have to cut a slit. and. It'd, probably have a pleat there. Here at this corner, you'd have to have a pleat too. So because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the seam right on top of this. And if I do that, see how this fabric will basically rest nicely and the other panel should do the same. So that's where we're going to mark it for the seam allowance and then this panel will be marked to that area as well. So I'm just going to take a straight edge here and I'm going to mark right in the middle of that foam. This foam will be compressed when the, when the fabric comes around. And then here I'm going to kind of um, do it by eye. Okay, so what are we going to do here at the front? Well, what I'd like to do sometimes is put dash marks and we're trying to go with a, with a good looking piece. So um, if you don't like it, you can always redo it. One of the easiest things to remove marks from Duraskrim is McLube. I know it's a lube. I spray it on a rag and it takes permanent marker off instantly. So if you make a mistake, you can always do that. I'm sure there are other things that'll work. I think what I want to do is I want to spray this down and I want it to get, get it to rest, so I'm going to put some spray glue here. Because I'm kind of guessing at this and I don't want to guess. What your pattern looks like is what your fabric's going to look like. I also put some spray glue, glue here to make sure this sits down because I want to get the feel for this corner. There, the, the wrinkles are minimal. And now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of those marks that I don't like. Now that I sprayed it down, it's a little bit easier. Let me get some more of this on here. And dash lines are still your friend. So I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to put a dash, a dash, and I'm just kind of following the shape of this chair trying to keep this seam looking good. Yeah, that is much better. I don't know if you can see that, but that's basically coming straight down and should look appealing. So if I put the fabric up against here and kind of distribute those wrinkles, I think when this fabric pulls it over, I think we'll be okay because the wrinkles are minimal. So I still tried to follow this and have it be close to the top bridge, but when this pulls over, you, we might get a few wrinkles here uh, at, the, at this corner, because the only other thing you could do is actually sew in a pleat like that and have a little ear. Um, but I, I don't really want to do that. 
I'm going to just be okay with a few little wrinkles. So I'm going to cut away the excess, being careful to stay on my um, line that I struck. I might have to remove it for a, a little bit, up like this, but not all the way off, because I don't want to really have to reposition this again. It has so much shape. So I'm just trying to cut it right on my line, and I'll do that all the way ar around it. This is the corner of the chair, and I'm just going to put a mark there. That way I know that this comes down. We're actually going to follow this straight down to that juncture, and that should, should be able to bring the fabric back to the back side. Now we're going to need extra fabric here. I'm just going to say uh, from this juncture here, we're going to need um, three inches of fabric. And so I'm just going to mark the bottom where this is falling, and we'll add three inches uh, beyond these marks so we have enough fabric to pull around. Now leave this pattern on the outside because we need these uh, lines so that we know where our seam is. We're going to do the inside next. So we have this panel, this panel, and a little strip at the top. And I think I'm going to do these in separate pieces first. So let's start with this one just to make it a little bit easier. So I've cut some uh, Duraskrim to the general size that I need. And I'll just spray some adhesive on that. And we'll stick it down. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, now we are going to have to add some uh, allowances here at the bottom, obviously, because we have to staple it down here. But I am going to just trace it where it's falling. Um, and then we'll add for the extra so that it can be stapled uh, down. So here we're going to have a strip of fabric. Um, I'm just going to put a line here that's going to be joined to this. Make sure you leave some excess because we have to wrap it and join it to that seam. But cutting it to a smaller size makes it much easier for patterning. Get around this ridge. So what I'm going to do is just cut right into the where it comes up against this. And that allows it to take that ridge. We could just cut it here too. Okay. Now we've got to wrap this around. And I did spray some glue there. If I, if I need to spray some more 77, I'll do so. Because I want that to fold over. We need to cut a slit here because this doesn't want to take that fold without having a little bit of a relief. Need to cut it a little bit deep. So I've, I've slid it, and I'm pulling it pretty hard there, but it did fall on that seam like I want. And But the slit doesn't go past that area that we marked. <coughs> now here I've got to introduce a few little wrinkles, but I'm going to distribute them a little bit. Now let's mark right on top of where the other one was. So I'm just doing dash marks. Now here I'm going to do a solid mark. You can do solid marks too, but I can join these up later on. So I've stuck this down with a few little wrinkles here because it has to take this turn and I'm just going to mark right on top of those the seam line that we have underneath. We'll repeat this step for the opposite side of the inside of this chair. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to just put a one up here <coughs> that'll bridge the gap because this is going to be one continuous piece of fabric. This is a little bit too large, but Oh well, it's getting the job done. We'll cut it down to size. Okay, our lines are rough here, but 
it doesn't really matter because all we need to do is make sure they're just matched up. So I'm following that and I really should see there's a there's a line that I struck there. So we'll put transfer that here, transfer that here, and we'll follow this crude line so that it's laid right on that. Let's mark this out. And we need, uh, yeah, we aren't going to do half inch seam allowance. <coughs> At the top, we have to wrap it around like that. And then we just need to transfer this line so we're right on top of that top line. And it's just going to be cut here because it just staples to the back side. All right. It's time to remove the panels. Now that the patterning is done, it's time to cut our vinyl fabric to size according to the patterns. Okay, so now we're going to cut on these lines here. These are the seam lines, and remember we do have to add a half inch to this, but I'm not adding it to the pattern. I cut on the outside seam lines. I didn't cut where we just need to add fabric because it's not that crucial. So remember we put this on this crude line here so it's right on top of that and I'm going to go ahead and tape it to that locale and then over here it should fit perfectly on top of that line. Make sure that it's sitting flat. Okay, we're taking down, taking off the other one. This is the bottom edge, and here's where that corner was. But I would rather continue this uh, in the in the same plane that it is, and come down here, and sew it into our three inch area so that I have plenty of fabric. So I'm basically just going to stop sewing there and have excess fabric down here to pull around. This is our vinyl. This is Eversoft, great vinyl fa seating fabric. Outside surface is facing down. Out is upside down. That's very important. I'm going to use a little bit of our Super 77, half of it, and stick it down because it wasn't laying very flat. And this just makes it so that it lays beautifully. And I have plenty for a half inch seam allowance here, plenty for my three inch coming down here. And we're going to stick it down in this manner. Okay, now you could mark this if you want, but I'm just adding a half inch by sight and following the pattern. Uh, and here I'm, I'm just going to add about three inches past this line down here. So I might just cut like that roughly. But uh, here's where we need to add the half inch and we're going to do this all around. Now we already glued this one down to the vinyl fabric and you have to make sure that it's totally flat especially with a weird shape like this. We added a half inch all around here and then we have at least three inches of extra fabric all over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold each one of these panels in half to find the center. Now there's not going to be a total, um, what do you call it, symmetrical shape. See how it doesn't really lay flat on each other. But uh, we're going to just uh, take this as the center because that's uh, basically, uh, edges are almost right on, on top of each other. And we're going to put a notch uh, at that location here. And then we're going to take this one because we're going to start at the center. And we're going to fold it in half and put a notch there. Next up, sewing vinyl fabric pieces together. Once that's done, we'll unfold it. The notch is here. Outside surfaces would face each other. So we're going to start at the middle top with these notches right on top of each other and sew here. We're going to take the half inch magnetic guide and put it on the half inch of the needle plate of the fabricator sewing machine which puts the stitch at a half inch. And we're going to match up those marks starting at the center top and make sure the edges of the fabric are lined up as we sew. I'm not going to do any reversing because reversing sometimes shows when the panel is flipped right side out. And I am going to reduce the stitch length to about five millimeters. Mm. 
So your job is just, just to line up the edge of the fabric and keep it against the magnetic guide at a half inch as you sew. Because this seam has compound curves in it, they go one direction then the other direction, matchup marks typically don't work well. That's why we start at the center top or the middle at the top and sew to the left side. And then when we're done with that, we flip the panel and sew to the right side in the same manner. Because we're starting to sew from the center and going both directions when we sew them together, that keeps everything centered. All right, we sewed all the way to the bottom. We did some reversing there at the end. Now, since we started at the middle, we have to flip it because we have to sew with this panel on the bottom. And let's cut our trailers and we'll start sewing where we began at the center. So let's get this in here. And I don't usually reverse again. I usually just sew over my stitches by about two inches. So there's two inches from where I began. And I make sure that my stitch is right on top of the previous stitches. And we sew in this opposite direction. So we're gonna do this all the way to the uh, end, just like we did. A little bit of reversing here. This is the back and this is the inside. I'm going to put the top stitch in the back panel, which means that the seam allowance has got to be folded towards the back panel. And this does have some shape in it, so immediately at the end we can uh, see that there's some shape. So it's folded back to the right. And I have my edge guide in here. So we're, we're going to switch this to um, six millimeters for the top stitch. And then this foot basically allows you to use it as a guide because this, this thing comes down along the first stitch. So since there's shape here, we're going to splay this out. Now it's going to be hard for you to see because there's all the shape in the fabric, but uh, you'll get the idea here once we get past this. So I'm going to sew and I'm probably going to do a little bit of reversing here just to make sure it stays locked because this has to be pulled around a corner. There we go. And now we're ready to sew. Just make sure that your seam allowance is going the right direction, which is to the right. And if you're doing any shape, which we're doing here, just smooth it out an inch or so before you, you get to it, like we're doing. And sew an inch, if you can only sew an inch. Um, I, it's probably hard for you to see, but I'm displaying it left and right. And then I bury my needle so I don't lose my spot. I check my uh, seam allowance on the underside to make sure it's going the right way and open it up and sew another inch. This is a real pothole so you can't see it at all. But just trust me, when you in spots like this you just want to take it a little bit at a time and smooth out the fabric. So now we're to the easy stuff where there's not as much transition. So you can see basically how this works. It works beautifully. Tails over here, I can feel it. Now I'm getting a little bit more shape. So I'm gonna splay my fabric out and follow that shape. That's all there is to it. Now we get to see how it fits on the helm seat frame. After this top stitch, you can see it's a little bit bumpy. If you turn it right, wrong side out, you can actually help relieve that because all this fabric has to take the turn. So what I typically do is I take scissors or a notcher and I just notch along that curve. Now you don't have to do this on the straightaways and you definitely want, don't want to cut into your top stitch. But along the curve this should help. So after we do this about every eighth inch or so, we're going to show you what it's like. It helps. Okay, I'm. Um, this is silk film. It's center folded, so I'm unsplaying it. I've got a little bit on the chair already, but I want to cover it so that it, the foam goes on nicely. With all that glue, it'll stick like crazy to the uh, foam. 
So this will just allow it to basically be shoved over the foam a little bit easier. Now here in the middle, I'm going to relieve this because this is going to keep the fabric from, from going up or coming close to the chair. So that will allow it to rest a little bit more. Okay, this is going to be a very tight fit um, and you will have to do some pulling. So we'll start up here at the top. I'm going to come around and get one of these arms in position here and then over here. This one will be harder because as soon as you get one on, the other one's going to be much more difficult. But with that silk film, she should slip into position. Okay, your job is to get that seam laying where you want it. And this will take a little bit of finagling. Um, this is approximately a pretty good spot, actually. Just keep working the vinyl around. We're going to have to cut some slits up here at the front, which we expected. I think it's going to be good. I'm going to start at the middle and I want to make sure that, yeah, it's definitely centered. And I'm going to look at this seam. I'm going to put it down here so hopefully you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to position that seam right at that top. And again, I like to do tacking stitches first to make sure that I'm happy with it, which are deep into the assembly. So two or three staples just to hold it in place. Those can be removed if we're not happy. Yeah, I think that looks good. There is a screw that's going to cause problems. And I have plenty of fabric because we're going to have a board that goes in here. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of a relief uh, to get that taken care of. So at this corner here, We'll probably have a few wrinkles, which is expected. But if I take my finger, and I know that the board's going to cover all the way, it's actually going to cover all the way up here. But if I take my finger and I say, OK, right there, I'm going to put a slit that goes into my vinyl and stops there. I don't want to cut too deep, because the board's going to basically rest right here. This will allow me to pull that wrinkle more towards the middle, as you can see. And I don't want this so tight that it actually is different than this one because that's where I want that at. Now I'm using a long nose stapler, which allows me to get a little bit closer. And I'll just put one staple there to hold that in position. So now I'm going to work this, this direction and pull this down. And put a staple fairly close. that and then come over here concentrate on that and push this in towards the foam make sure we're very close to the board otherwise it's just going to punch a hole through the uh, vinyl that's pretty good Okay, we pulled the staples out, which is not uncommon, and be, we had several wrinkles. What I want to do is I want to create one, and uh, I think it'll look better, and it'll look like it was more intentional. So that will basically reduce the wrinkles up here and get us uh, the appearance of one major wrinkle. So I'm going to put a staple here, which kind of holds it in place, and then we'll come back here and we will do our, our thing. So if I start here, I can try to work some of these out 
and get a staple here. There, so we have to have very few wrinkles here, one wrinkle there. We're going to repeat that procedure on this side. Okay, we have a little bit too much fabric here. It's hard to actually tension it. Just be careful that you don't cut too much away. I'm just going to cut it to here. Okay, we cut a little bit skinny, as I said before. Be careful about cutting it too skinny, but we're still okay. Looking good. Before we get to this, I stopped stapling here. We got to try to work this out. So I want to basically concentrate on getting a, a few staples at this corner to work out this wrinkle. So I'm pulling basically at a 45 degree angle to that and getting close to the foam. Don't push too hard down with the staple or you'll blow through your vinyl. Now, uh, we'll be able to get that out by pushing the vinyl down towards here and see how that's coming out. Once it's in a secure position, we can basically do that. Long nose stapler is definitely rather important for a job like this. Now when we come to over here, we'll be able to pull it here and work that wrinkle out towards the bottom. Maybe over here is better. That looks pretty good. There's still a little bit of wrinkle, but we haven't even tightened the back side. Yeah, the front side. We haven't, we haven't even worked with the front side. So I've only got a few tacking staples in position. Um, but it's, it's, it's coming along very nicely, and I think I'll still be able to get that out. I know I will be able to. Notice that wrinkle's gone. Now, I'm not putting them terribly close yet. We'll do that in a little bit. Now, we expected to make a relief cut here, and it's obvious that it needs it. I'm going to do it in the middle of the board, and I'm going to do this very slowly to work this out. I got to go deeper. We are going to have a piece of uh, boat blanket on this, so that'll be hidden completely. But it's obviously re re starting to relax now. I just don't want to cut too far into the assembly. And that might be uh, sufficient enough to get it stapled to this juncture. Maybe a little bit more. You can see it's just taking out the wrinkles as we cut, which is what we want. Okay, in an effort to get these wrinkles out, what I'm going to do before I staple anywhere in here is I'm going to pull it down. So I'm going to put the chair back and try to work these out to the best of my ability. This is the underside of the chair, so I can put a lot of pressure on here and nobody's going to see this. And that definitely helped. Now, we haven't even put any staples over here yet. So when I put my fingers down here, uh, obviously I've got a bubble here. This uh, could use another relief to allow that to escape. Look at that. Just allows it to basically go away. And we're going to have boat blanket over that. And there's actually a seat that fits in here. So this is looking good. Just make sure this is pulled down before I put a staple in there. If you push too hard with a stapler, you'll blow through the vinyl, especially if you're trying to uh, tension something well. So just don't push too hard. That's looking good. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to start working on the underside. And as long as the wrinkles are on the underside, nobody's going to see them. So make sure the vinyl is nice and smooth. And we'll just put a few in a preliminary spot just to secure it. So here at this corner, I have a little bit of a wrinkle, but I can pull it almost to the bottom and actually create an intentional um, pleat in it. As long as it's pulled to the bottom like it is, then 
we can secure it. So we're just going to keep working around the perimeter like this. So at a corner, one way to reduce the bulk is to actually cut a 45 to the corner, stopping short. I've stopped about a half inch from the corner and then cut on the other side, stopping short, and then simply take this triangle out, which basically creates a 45. So you take this one out too. And then the idea is that you can staple these down, which we'll do, pulling taut. And then you can take this, and it looks like we need to cut a little bit uh, deeper in here to get a good pull on that. And you can pull that across like that and staple it down. And that's a pretty nice looking corner. Okay, this is a steamer. And these wrinkles are obvious on this side. And I'm gonna show you what can be done with a steamer. Now you have to be careful because uh, depending on the vinyl, the vinyl match actually might be damaged with this. So you wanna be careful. Some people just use a heat gun, but a heat gun's actually worse. A steamer usually will take care of this issue without causing damage. And look at that. They are totally gone. Okay, the last step is to trim close to where your staples are to get rid of the excess. We'll do this all around the perimeter and then we'll move on to the next step, which is the backrest portion. This helm seat incorporates a backrest with foam on a backer board. That's next. We're going to cut our foam to size. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to replace this foam. It's got black mold all over it. We're going to measure it. And remember, it's, it is slightly compressed. This is measures two and a half, but it was more probably more like three. Um, this one, if you measure it in a spot where it hopefully hasn't compressed much, was two inches. And then they have this lumbar support that used to blow up. Uh, with a pump, probably some sort of a, a ball uh, plunger. Um, this is a very soft foam and it was put in uh, like this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually just cut a one inch piece of foam that's soft and put it in its place. So we're going to cut new foam. What I did is I laid the backer plate up here and then I held my marker out here so that this is about a quarter inch larger than my backer plate and then I marked where the fabric pole is and you can see it was right there. So we'll just take a straight edge and mark across there. Now I didn't add anything at the fabric pole, it's just right on top of the, where that line was. And then we're going to cut it out with the blade foam saw. Cushion right foam from Sayerite is uh, rolled like this and compressed. And when you undo it, it will expand rather quickly. If it doesn't expand right away, then you may have to wait a, a day before it comes back to its normal shape. We will not show cutting this to size. On top of my new foam, I'm going to place the old foam, kind of right where the fabric pole goes. Uh, my foam is a little bit wider than theirs. Theirs is compressed. And I'm just going to mark where they had that lumbar support in approximately that location. This is my one inch soft that I'm going to put in, which will duplicate that lumbar that's obviously you can't blow this one up uh, with an air pump. So we're going to glue that to this. I'm going to use general trim adhe adhesive, but you can also use foam lock to do this. We're just going to put some glue on both surfaces. When it's tacky and doesn't transfer to your finger, then it's time to bond them together and we'll simply press it in place. Next up, we're going to cut the vinyl fabric to size for the backrest. Okay, just because they design something in this manner doesn't mean you have to stick with it. What we've decided to do is make this part tan, the boxing tan, or teak is what it really is, and then here we're going to make this all black with a piping here rather than here and with uh, stitches in this area as this is a half inch uh, sew foam here. 
So no cell foam here, cell foam here. Now here at the bottom, the boxing basically stops here and is sewn to the bottom and this part wraps around. So we want to make sure we include enough fabric at the bottom to wrap around and staple to our backer board. So I'm going to move my assembly up here. Now I have plenty to wrap around. And we are going to make it slightly oversized. It's better to make things oversized and then um, cut them down to size after they're sewn together. So this is our black vinyl. This is where our fabric pole is. I'm just going to strike a line with a straight edge along it. And we are going to add a half inch to that. And then again, we're going to go oversize everywhere else. So I'll move this now and let's add this half inch uh, to this uh, line at the top for our seam allowance. Right there. So we're going to cut it out to that size. Now on this line, I definitely want to be straight. Okay, this is my foam piece and I'm going to put a half inch here because this is where the fabric pole has to go. We're just going to go a little bit oversized because we'll trim it after it's sewn together. I don't need to have any extra for pull around, so I'm just going about an inch and a half, two inches oversized. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to quilt the bottom portion of our backrest. This is our general trim. You could use foam lock for this too. We're going to coat the underside of our vinyl with this and we're going to glue a half inch sew foam to it. And we want to coat both surfaces so I'm going to have to move this out of the way to keep from getting glue all over the place. Okay now that our uh, adhesive is tacked up we can put this down and I like to start from the center. Looks like we got a shoe print in this <laughs> and lay it out. This is our top edge that has the seam allowance. Now we're going to take some uh, less expensive scissors and cut. Uh, remember, it's oversized, so you don't have to be precise here. At the top, you definitely want to be precise, so we're going to cut right on that. I like the general location of where those are, so I've matched it up to our fabric pole, which is right here. This would typically be a half inch above that, but it doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm just going to put my uh, ruler here and uh, make sure this edge is straight and we'll put a line and we do have to add a curve with uh, our chalk here because this comes off pretty well. You always want to check your utensils to make sure or your fabric marking things to make sure it comes off of whatever you're marking. I drew another line down about two inches. Theirs is actually about one and a quarter but I don't I went two and then I'm gonna use this flexible ruler and I'm not going to make that curve the same as I did down below. I'm actually just going to look for something that looks pleasing. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's see if, if I don't like it, I'm just going to use a wet rag and remove my marks and remark them. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, this is uh, kind of like creates a little quilt, which makes things look pretty good. And all we need to do, and I'm not going to do any reversing because this is oversized, is just follow that chalk line and I'm sewing in about a six millimeter straight stitch. And I've already checked to make sure the tension looks good with some scrap. Uh, I did that a long time ago. So we're gonna do that to both of these chalk lines. So here's a wet rag. And again, whatever you're marking with, make sure the marks come off because they need to come off of this. And now we have a beautiful pleated plate. In this chapter, between the two heights of foam, we're going to create and sew a fabric pole on. My fabric pole needs to be one inch uh, wi uh, wider than uh, my uh, thinnest foam, and my thinnest foam is two inches. So we're going to make this three inches and obviously make it long enough to go across. Okay, on to this piece that we just cut. I like to strike a line that's a half inch up. That way I can staple on that line and I do it on both sides on the same side, so on the underside as well. Okay, this is our fabric pole and I'm going to sew it onto this top edge with the line down. And then after that's done, I'm going to sew the piping on like so. So we have this lined up against the edge and I don't want to sew a half inch in, I want to sew a quarter inch. So I'm putting the magnetic guide at a quarter inch of the needle plate of the Sayrat Fabricator sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew this in place along this edge. Okay. 
So now our fabric pulls on the bottom side, the piping goes on here, and you can sew this onto either one of the plates, but uh, I find it easier to sew it onto this one without the silk film first. And I have my cording foot in place on the machine. No reason to do any reversing because we have these oversized. This is the edge that we have to sew the, the a tan plate on, and I like to compress the edge. So I still have my cording foot in here, but I like to sew right up against the edge to compress the half inch sew foam, because otherwise it's just a little bit harder to sew. So I'm gonna put that stitch very close to the raw edge, and this will help to compress it for easier sewing of the piping. Doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight, you just don't wanna see this stitch when you're done. So now outside surfaces will face each other. So this gets sewn like that. And I still have my cording foot in here. So now this is gonna wanna wander, so make sure that you, your edges are lined up. And with that cording foot, it should sew right on top of the piping nicely. We'll sew to the other end and no need to do reversing. Now that the plates are sewn together, we're gonna cut them to size and sew on the boxing. So now that we have our plates done and it looks really good, flip it upside down, place your top foam up here, push it hard against the uh, uh, fabric pole area, the fabric pole is laying down, doesn't matter, and trace around this so that it equals the size of the foam. It can be slightly bigger if your pin marks outside the edge a little bit, but no smaller than the size of the foam. Typically, it's always the size of the foam. Take this one, place it. Uh, this is our lumbar, so that goes down, and it goes like that. So we're gonna butt it up to the foam here, and we just wanna basically follow it down this edge. So I'm gonna put a mark here and a mark here and a mark here and here because this is a straight edge. So we're basically making it the same size as the foam except for we wanna leave this excess because this is gonna wrap around and staple to the backer board. I have plenty of excess. So let's just straighten out those lines a little bit and go all the way to the bottom edge. Now we're just gonna trim on these outside lines and then we'll sew the boxing on. Okay, I'm gonna start sewing and compressing the sew foam before I sew on my boxing here. So I'm just gonna sew very close to that edge so the stitch doesn't show up. Uh, and we're, we're not gonna sew at the bottom because that just basically wraps, well, I might as well sew at the bottom because it's just easier to turn around the corner and sew the bottom and then sew the other side. So we're gonna sew all the way up to where the piping is, which ends our uh, sew foam compressing the edge so we can sew the boxing on a little bit easier. Okay, so the boxing just needs to end at the bottom because we have plenty of fabric there. So I'm going to just line it up at the bottom um, and we're gonna put it at a half inch. I gotta compress all this stuff to get it under the foot since there's sew foam under there. And there's the half inch. I'm gonna put the magnetic guide at a half inch and we're just gonna line up the edges as we sew here. So I'm, I'm looking at the black and the, t the outside surfaces are facing each other. And we're probably gonna put a top stitch in this as well. So we're gonna sew around the perimeter. Now when I get to the piping, I'm gonna have to sew over this bump and I might have to help the sewing machine over it. And I'm not gonna worry about sewing through the fabric pole because I can just cut it later. Um, the fabric pole doesn't have to go all the way to the extreme edges. So let's see what happens when I get to that piping. Oh yeah, looks like it might walk over it. Up, oh, got stuck right there. So when it gets stuck, just roll the balance wheel until the needle's out, lift your presser foot, and push the fabric like one stitch, which is six millimeters, and now we're unstuck. So now we're coming to that corner. So I'm just rolling the assembly in the bottom side trying to be uh, smooth and consistent so it's a nice rounded corner, matching up the edges as I go. And I'm around that corner. Okay, we'll sew the other end and show you what's next. 
Okay, notice how much boxing we have here, but we still have enough to wrap around, I checked. I just made this panel really long. So where do I want my top stitch? I want my top stitch to be in the tan, not in the black. So I'm gonna make sure the flange is over uh, towards the right. Okay, so I have my edge guide in. You don't have to have the edge guide. I was gonna sew it without it, but hey, it's a pretty nifty device. So all you do is just keep the edge guide up into your seam. Make sure that your seam allowance is to the right, which I can feel it. And we are sewing a six millimeter. So as long as my seam allowance is going that direction, we will sew around the perimeter like this. Pretty easy. When I get to the piping, I'll show you what we do there. And when I get to the corner, I'll show you that. So here's the piping. Um, I'm just gonna splay it out and hopefully this will walk over the piping without issue, we'll see. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, it actually did it. Okay, and, and we're coming to this corner. So when you get to the corner or any kind of shape, you're gonna have to pull it out and sometimes you can only sew an inch or, or so. Uh, so you just basically spread out the material uh, so that it's easy to spread out for whatever distance it is and you sew to that point and then you make sure your needle's buried and you spread out the next uh, assembly. So like here I can only sew about an inch, needle's buried and then I make sure my tail's in the right spot and I just keep spreading it out. With the needle buried you won't lose your spot. So I'm pulling left and right and now I am pretty much around that corner. Okay, we're gonna sew all the way to the other end and then we'll show you what's next. Look at that, that top stitch looks gorgeous. Now, if this is, a, when you turn it wrong side out, if you get all these little wrinkles, sometimes just cutting a relief notch, not going deeper than your seam allowance, actually helps it to relax a little bit. So I like to do that at corners only, wherever it's wrinkled. Okay, we sewed the fabric pull in, no big deal. I'm just gonna cut it up to where it uh, joins there. Now it's released on this side and we'll do the same thing over here. We'll install the cover to the backrest and staple it in place to the backer board. Okay, we don't have any foam in here, but there's our fabric pole and there's the half inch that we marked. Um, and we don't have a black line here, but we have old staples. So we're gonna center this and I'm gonna put a staple here, right on the half inch and right on those pass staples, which should be where the foam ends. There, and over here. And then, I'll just make sure it's nice and straight and staple. Uh, at least every, you know, so staples are an eighth inch or so away from each other, because we don't want this to give up the ghost and fail on us. Okay, we want to glue this foam in place and we want to glue it so that it's right up against those staples like this and with a little bit of excess on the edges. I'm going to put this underneath because I have to spray and I don't want to spray on my table. So I'm going to put some spray glue on this. And then I'm going to, I don't think it matters which is the right side and the wrong side for this. It's almost the same shape. Once it's tacked up, test it with your finger and make sure it doesn't transfer. Uh, we will stick it on like that. That holds it in place. And we should have a, yep, about the same amount of our, all around the perimeter. And then we can wrap this around and it will be, oh, we, I want to put some silk film on that. So this is silk film. I have it. It, it's center folded, but I didn't unfold it. And we're just gonna put it over this. This will make it easier for us to basically pull the vinyl over the foam because the vinyl always sticks to the foam. Okay, so our first task is to get this seam very close to this edge. I like to pull it so that the seam is actually, so I'm gonna pull this taut we know that it's centered because it's fitting over it. And I'm just looking for a, a nice looking spot for the seam and I think it looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna hold it here and put a few staples in here. Now these staples can be removed if we don't like the position. 
but I like to put at least two or three just to make sure it doesn't rip out the vinyl. Good. So now once that's in position, let's concentrate on this one. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to glue. Okay, with this opened up and now with the spray glue on it, it's tacked up. We're going to put it so the lumbar is out, but we need to make sure that it's shoved up into this opening. So don't worry if, if, if you get it on the, the, uh, the if, you, if you stick it down, you can still manipulate it a little bit. We just want to fill that void. So we want it up against there. It's not uncommon for me to have to rip it up and kind of pull it up to get it to fill. Okay, we can use our sew foam and I can open it up if it's too small, but I think it's going to actually work well. I'll kind of stuff it into that area. And that should allow us to pull this on. Yeah, it's going to be good. And let's work on, now that we have everything in position, let's work on this top a little bit to get it. I only got three staples in there. I'm going to actually pull a little bit more. And this should secure this well. Check to make sure that your seam is looking good. Yeah, this, these wrinkles should come out when we pull side to side. If not, I'm going to remove those staples and we'll get it out. So right now I'm going to ignore this corner. We'll come back to that. We're going to pull tightly here. And I'm going to put a couple of preliminary staples in here that can come out if we need to. Two. And then I'm going to come over here on this side and do the same. Trying to get that seam in about the right spot or same spot as it is on the other side. Yeah, that's looking better. And then when we pull this corner, these will these will pull down too. So let's go ahead and concentrate on a corner. All right, so here's the corner. If you bisect it, and what I like to do is I like to uh, come down at that corner with a little bit of excess fabric because I'm going to make a little tag, basically. So I want to stop before I get to the edge. And then I'll cut this out, leaving you know, that uh, half inch tag. And that should be at a 45. So if I pull, see how that's at almost at a 45. And then what you do to get rid of the bulk is you cut a miter uh, out of this like that, and a miter out of this, and you can, you can trim more away. And then the idea is that this and this almost butts into each other, and then this pulls to the back side, keeping all the wrinkles on the back side. So now tension it well, and put a staple here, tension it well here, put a staple here, and we, we'll put more staples in in a little bit, but look at that. And that's the one way that you do a corner, which should come out pretty nice like it is here. Okay. Now that we're happy with the uh, head rest, I should call it, it's stapled in place for the most part. There's still a few more staples that need to go in. We're going to pull down. Now we have that lumbar here, that half inch or that one inch foam, I should say. And so it's going to bump out. But what we want to do is we want to pull hard here. And I'm going to flip it over and we have tons of excess fabric, which gives us the ability to pull it super hard to the back side. And I'm going to put three staples, actually put four in there to hold it down tight. Okay. So that bump is because of that lumbar and you don't have to have a lumbar. They had it, so I'm trying to put it in there. Now we have all this excess material. I definitely have plenty. You can see our boxing still on this side. We still had enough. So I'm going to cut some of this away because it's just getting in the way. Once that's in place, I'm going to work on this piping. This, this will bulge out a little bit. So we're just trying to go with something that looks good. And you can see the piping is actually hitting here. I could trim some of that away. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I think that looks pretty good. 
So I'm going to put a staple here. And then we're going to do it here. Nice. Now we're going to concentrate on this part. Notice I'm not putting staples everywhere. I'm just trying to get the preliminary position. And that looks good there. And do it over here. And then we'll uh, show you what to do at the corners. I'm going to get a, a little bit closer to these corners, but not too close because I need to cut this away. We're going to do the same thing at the corner here. We're going to mark where that corner falls. And I'm actually going to cut this before I get to the backer board. So I'm kind of sighting where that backer board is. And we're going to cut 45s out of that, out of that, which gets rid of the ball. Since we've already shown this process, we're going to move ahead. OK, once you're happy, just add more staples around the perimeter, making sure that everything stays taut. Now it's not uncommon if you have a problem to take out a staple and reposition it. We didn't show a lot of that, but we did do that a few times. We just didn't show it on camera. Now we're going to take the excess and trim it around the perimeter. So I've cut some boat blanket to fit exactly from side to side and I'm just going to secure it in the middle here and then out to the sides. So it comes around the front and the staples to the bottom side and I'm just going to pull it taut and put a few staples down there. All right, this is the seat. We didn't show the seat, but we have a video at the upper right corner that shows how to do this process. But it's basically done like, it, like the backrest is done. So it fits in there like this. And then the backrest has that thing that fits in to these things. And, and I do have to screw the backrest in. In fact, I think the backrest goes back here. This helm seat for a speedboat is now complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. We use so foam and cushion right foam available from Sayrite, and for the vinyl we used a fabric called Eversoft, which is a great indoor-outdoor fabric that works great for applications like this, only available at Sayrite. If you have any questions about the materials lists or tools or the process shown in this video, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new Speedboat Makeover Series tutorial videos that are coming soon as we continue to take a speedboat that's old and make it look brand new using upholstery supplies and tools from Sailrite. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.